Hey guys, we've just started our YouTube paid membership to help get me and my team through these tough times. If you guys want to see some more exclusive content, Q and A's with me and serious recipe tutorials online, subscribe to our channel on the paid membership and you'll get that. Don't forget, tell all your friends. Hey guys, Jeremy back again from School of Wok in Covent Garden. It is Wok Less Wednesdays and this week is to celebrate Songkran, Thai New Year. Happy New Year to all of you guys out in Thailand. We are making a Thai Masaman curry. So this curry is relatively mild, not too chilli hot, but has good flavour from the spices. And the first part of it is to toast your whole spices. So I've got some black pepper, cumin seeds and some coriander seeds here. And you want to dry toast them, so get them onto medium heat. Just no oil, nothing like that. So let them temper and release as much oil and aroma as possible before you then put it into the pestle and mortar. Then we're gonna add all of those brilliant Thai base flavors. So your garlic, your galangal, lemongrass, some Thai shallots and some dry red chilies that have been soaked and cut up along with the cardamom powder. So what you wanna do is wait for all that sort of earthy, sweet aroma to come out of the spices, but don't cook it on too high a heat because they can burn very easily. Straight into the pestle and mortar. And then I've got my plate of base spices here. So just to reiterate, we've got lemongrass, some Thai shallots, garlic, dry red chilies, they've been soaked in hot water, and then some galangal and some cardamom powder. If you can't find cardamom powder, just get some green cardamom and give it a good crush. And the heat from the toasted spices should actually help to bring out a bit of moisture from the rest of the fresh spices. Everything for your paste needs to be finely, finely chopped up before you start going into it. And it's gonna take probably about 10 minutes or so to get to a nice smooth paste. There's no particular skill set to this other than some serious bashing. The only other thing I need to add to this is some shrimp paste. Make sure you really mix that in well. Anything with shrimp paste in, you don't want a big clump of it at all. So I've got a really good smooth paste. A lot of people ask whether you can do this in a food processor. Yes, you can. You probably won't get it as smooth unless you add a bit of oil to the sort of blitzing. And actually, the difference is that when you pound the spices like that, you get a really nice paste, smooth paste without that oil, and you released all the flavor and aroma from the spices. I've got enough, I've got just enough curry paste here for this curry, but if you wanted to make a big batch of it, you could double it, triple it, freeze it in small batches of, or bags. <laughs> <laughs> you can freeze this stuff, okay? I've got about two to three tablespoons worth of paste there, ready for my curry. And we're not quite finished with the spices yet. I've got some bay leaves, some whole green cardamom and some cinnamon stick, which I'm gonna start the curry off with. Oil, be generous with the oil to so make sure that the pan is well treated. You've got your cinnamon stick, cardamom and bay leaves. Bay leaves, especially dry ones, they can burn quite quickly. So just let that heat up for about 30 seconds to a minute and then we're gonna add your paste. Now you wanna get your paste in. And remember, everything in that paste, apart from the toasted whole spices, is still raw. So you wanna cook that rawness out of the paste. It'll take about three to five minutes to get that grassy flavor out. You should 
get an immediate hit of the flavour from the shrimp paste. I'd recommend starting on a medium high and then turn it down to a medium heat. That shrimp paste and spice mix is one of those smells that reminds me of walking down the streets of Thailand. Really fresh ingredients. Now outside of the effort that goes into that paste, everything else is just nice and slow and you know, love your curry, look after it, and it'll taste that much better. As the paste is cooking, it will start to dry up a bit and you'll get sort of more clumps of paste rather than sort of one homogenous paste. And that says to me that it's good. You can also smell the cooked aroma of the spices rather than the raw spices. And at this point, I've got my chicken with skin on, so I'm gonna put the, them straight in and start to sear that paste into the chicken. If you need a little bit of oil, just go around the edge. So if you are going to cook your chicken in the same pan as opposed to frying it in a separate pan, then you do want to sort of keep scraping the paste off the bottom whilst you're doing it, just so it doesn't burn and, or stick and burn too much. You get a lot of flavour out of that, so long as it doesn't burn. Turn those chicken pieces once you've seared the skin nicely. And then we're gonna to start to add your coconut milk. Your coconut milk, if you've watched any of the other curry videos, we like to sort of add your coconut milk gradually. So a little bit at a time, just to pick up all that paste and the flavor first. Give a good scrape and deglaze that pan with the coconut milk. You want it to come to a boil and then you can add a bit more. And this process here of gradually adding the coconut milk almost separates out the solid from the coconut milk and the liquid. And you should get the fat just sitting on the top of that, which gives you a really intense flavor underneath. Time to add a little bit more. And this curry doesn't need any stock or anything like that because it's all about the liquid from the coconut milk itself. I've got some tamarind here before I use up all the coconut milk. I quite like to put it in at this stage. So that's two to three tablespoons. Adds that natural sour. It'll balance out with some sweetness from the palm sugar and the coconut milk as well. And the reason why I like to put it in sort of a little bit earlier in the curries, so that, that sort of tartness just sort of balances out, mellows out a little. If I just threw it in at the end, then you'd, all you'd taste is the sour from the tamarind. Like with any sort of natural fruit, as it cooks, the sugars just develop into the dish and everything mixes in nicely. Now once half of that coconut milk has gone in at least, the rest can then pour straight over the top. It will look like it's very, very creamy, but over time, next sort of 20 minutes or so, the colour will really develop and deepen. The last thing I'm going to add to this is some large dices of potato. And that will thicken the sauce up quite quickly. And after about 20 minutes, those potato pieces will be cooked through and the sauce will deepen in colour. Bring that to a boil, simmer it for 20 minutes, and then we'll season it up. The curry's been going for about 30 minutes and that Oil is just lifted off over the top of that. You got a slight film of oil over the top, so you got deep flavor inside. The potatoes are cooked nicely and they're sort of just ready rather than melting completely into the curry. So we're gonna start to season this up and then the curry will be ready. So I've got some fish sauce. Let's go for th two to three tablespoons. So let's start with two tablespoons of fish sauce and then the same amount of palm sugar. Fish sauce, the saltiness will work really well with the spices. The palm sugar will just accentuate the sweetness of the coconut milk. Try not to break the chicken bits and the potatoes up whilst you're stirring that in. The colour is really deep and you've got that almost orangey brown curry sauce. Curry, ready. The chicken pieces have taken in all that flavour. There's something about curried potatoes, incredibly Moorish, kind of melt in your mouth. 
I have that light spice all the way round too. That's <laughs> really hot. The sauce is a great thickness from all that coconut milk. Garnish it with some crushed salted peanuts, a few leaves of coriander. Ooh. Warming winter masaman curry. My favorite part of any recipe, good bit of that sauce, a little bit of rice. You get the slight sour from the tamarind. And it balanced out really well with the spices and the palm sugar. I want to eat all of that masaman curry. If you guys do and you want to learn how to cook more of this sort of stuff, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like all of our social media, tell all your friends.